sitting in the dark. I was scared. But sitting in the goddamn dark. I was scared. I was afraid to lay the lights on, so I, I went for a What the hell are you doing here anyway? I paid the rent. I paid the deposit. I have a right. You've got no rights. <laughs> I told you to get the hell out. I don't care. Stop throwing things at me. Stop yelling at me. You gave me a horrible afternoon. You came to the lab and, and then you told me this nightmare story and your hands were shaking. You had a catatonic fit all over the floor. What was I supposed to do? I couldn't just let you walk out. I didn't know whether to go to the police or not to go to the police. <coughs> I definitely think you should go to the police. And tell them what? That I'm receiving threatening notes in biblical Hebrew? Aramaic. Aramaic! Look, Mr. Hannon, are you willing to entertain a constructive suggestion? No! I have a friend who might be able to help you. He's very I've naughty. been to a rabbi. Richard Peabody is not a rabbi. He's at Princeton. He's a professor in the theological seminary. His main field of concentration is biblical Hebrew. I'm sure he could give you some further help about the note or something. I I'm going up there this weekend and I could introduce you. Look, look. <laughs> I, I owe you an apology. You see, this guy I thought was following me, he's not following me. And, and the note, that, that, that comes from a, a burial society that probably wants me to light a devotional candle or something. Now look, can't we just forget about the whole thing? I take it you reject the suggestion. Look, what do you want to do? You want to travel 60 miles to talk to some buttoned down professor? I mean, what the hell is that? What are you looking for in this? Who says I'm looking for anything? Who says I even want to stay here? Obviously, we both made a mistake. One of us has. I'd like you to know that I happen to have a warm relationship of long-standing, long-standing with someone at Princeton. It may be hard for you to believe, but I'm not interested in improvised sexual adventures. I don't need to prey on men in trouble. I never meant that. I heard it in your voice. Why, is there something about me that looks so hungry? Take the sofa. Jesus! Mr. Hannon? Mr. Hannon? Dorothy? No, it's me, Ellie. Ellie? Soaking. Put this on.
Dorothy, is that your wife? Yeah. Yeah. Are you all right? I was in a bar. A cantina right across from El Paso. I was down there waiting for a guy. A federal witness we'd relocated. Dorothy was in New York. She, she had some vacation time saved. It was snowing there. She wanted to come down. I didn't try and stop her. There's an old guy playing a violin in the cantina. It was late. A few other people. We just finished our coffee when when the guy I was waiting for came through the front door two days early with a couple of friends. He spotted me. Dorothy saw my reaction. Friends started to go inside their coats. It happened so fast. I pushed her under the chair. She tried to say something and then and the shooting started, and, and the whole place exploded. Then they were gone. You see? For a second, I thought she was all right. She was warm. She, she just seemed a little scared, that's all. So, so I, I went over to her, and I put my arm underneath her and I... Oh, Harry, she said. Oh, Harry. I took my arm out and it was... It was wet. Oh, Harry. She just kept saying that. You come down for a vacation. <laughs> Maybe I'd, I better call a doctor. No. No. I got some stuff in the bathroom. Sorry, mate. 